cloud. Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, Zoom artist conversation. Uh, this is the sixth in the seventh um, series that we have. And we have tonight, we have three artists with us. We have Garen Baker, Joanne Grosser, and John Caggiano. I can never say your last name correctly, Deborah. I'm sorry. Oh, Grosser. Grosser. Okay. Grosser. We're going to hear, and we're going to hear a little bit about each one of the artists from themselves. And uh, this is just a way to introduce everybody to our artists virtually in October until we can get to the main event in May when you'll get to meet everybody in person when they're here painting in May. <laughs> so we are all very hopeful that, that, that that's going to happen. So we're just going to go ahead and start. And Deborah, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, ladies first. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I am Deborah Joy Grosser, and uh, I live in Ralston, Nebraska, which is a suburb of Omaha. And uh, I am an oil painter, and I've been doing plein air now for, gosh, 24 years, something like that. So absolutely love it. I do um, a lot of seascapes, landscapes, and I also do portraits. And um, I guess uh, as far as, uh, well, I guess I should, I should say, um, I am also the president of the American Impressionist Society. So uh, CEO and president. I've been president now since the beginning of 2013. So that's, I do that in, in addition to my full-time art career. And I have a little gallery here in our little downtown. And so I keep really busy. And then my husband's also mayor of our town. So, <laughs> so we keep very, very busy. Um, as far as I, I, uh, I love the Northeast. My dad was born and raised in Maine and I lived up there when I was a kid for a few years and uh, so I just love the Northeast. And um, I love the paintings that I've seen of, of the Cape Ann area. And so I've always wanted to apply and it scheduled never worked out for me. So when I saw how things worked this time in the dates, um, I thought, hey, I can do this. <laughs> and so I was really happy that the schedule would work out. So, um, so here I am. Great. Well, welcome. We're so happy to, I'm happy to meet you. I've not met you in person. Nice. It's so nice to, nice to meet you virtually. And I can't wait until May. Speaking of the mayor, okay, we're going to move on. So um, why don't I introduce, now I'll introduce um, Garen. Garen, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for doing this, and thanks to uh, uh, Cape Ann for putting this whole thing together. Uh, my name is Garen Baker. I'm, uh, uh, my studio and home is in New Windsor, New York. I'm originally from New York City. Uh, New Windsor is about 60 miles straight up the Hudson River from New York City, uh, and that's where I've been living for, I don't know, the past almost 30 years. Um, renovated it. It's a big old property we have here. Um, raised our kids here. And, uh, and so uh, it's right along the Hudson River, so it's a gorgeous place to paint. It's one of the reasons I moved from New York City up here. Um, I visited my good friend below me, John Caggiano, many times <laughs> in Rockport and in the Cape Ann area. And uh, uh, last year, I think I applied, but didn't get in. Uh, always wanted to paint the uh, harbors of Gloucester and follow in the footsteps of, uh, well, you know, uh, all the great painters in New England that have painted in the Cape Ann area. Uh, John probably knows their names a lot better than I do. You know, people like Emil Groupe and, and Malpunk and several others. Uh, their works I've admired, you know, as a plein air painter. Uh, for many, many years. So I'm so thrilled to be uh, invited this year. I uh, can't wait to get up in the area and paint. So, so sad that we're not actually doing it this October. Um, uh, but uh, that's uh, what I'm really looking to do. So basically, I'm a painter. Um, I plein air painted, although when I started plein air painting, we never really called it that. We just called it painting outdoors. Um, back when I was a student in New York City, um, I'm sort of out of the um, New York realism school, I guess. Um, trained at the Art Students League with some really amazing painters when I was 
a teenager, um, went on to Pratt Institute and then started my career as a professional artist. Um, I've done lots of public art murals, a lot of commissions, as well as uh, sales to uh, individuals, corporates, and also in museum collections. Um, lately, in the past few years, I'm now, which is kind of an amazing full circle, um, I'm actually an instructor now at the Art Students League and have been for about five or six years. And uh, uh, I guess you'll get into that later, Susan, about what we've been doing lately. Um, but I have a full volley of classes, a figure painting class, as well as a figure drawing class. Mostly my training is in uh, figurative work. Um, and so uh, this whole new sort of time that we're in has been a very interesting experience, especially in the art education field. So I'll leave it that and I'll let it let, uh, get down there to let John introduce himself. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Karen. That was great. That was Thank great. You. All right, John. Tell us about yourself. Uh, where do I begin? Uh, I, uh, I moved here 40 years ago to Rockport, Massachusetts. Uh, uh, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, just a Brooklyn kid, and uh, loved New England. Met someone, and she got me to move here. <laughs> Uh, never look back. Uh, although I didn't think at the time, now how am I going to make a living? <clears throat> well, Rockport and Cape Ann is an area that uh, is generally composed of carpenters, fishermen, um, retail uh, stores, and art galleries, many art galleries. It has a long tradition of art galleries. Uh, this art colony has been here more than 100 years. And uh, yes, Garen, uh, Emil Grupe and Mohopt and uh, Lester Stevens, Aldro Hibbard, um, <clears throat> uh, Antonio Serino, I can go on, uh, were luminaries from, from this area. Great painters. And they formed the Rockport School of Art. And I'm sure some of it has rubbed off on me, although I tried to keep an individual uh, identity. And... Um, at any rate, I, I, I opened the gallery and I said, oh no, uh, you know, at least 10 years of starving, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, starving artist uh, stigma. But uh, within a few years, I was uh, making a decent living. And so I never had to do anything else. Um, I, I do miss not teaching, but uh, I have enough on my plate. Uh, it's a full-time business. And even though I hire people, there, there's uh, uh, enough work to be done, and I need to paint. And after all, that's my raison d'etre. So uh, I've, I've been, in, in terms of Kappa, Cape Ann uh, Plein Air, I've uh, been fortunate enough to be juried in uh, all five years, and uh, look forward to, to uh, yet another year. I can't say this year so much, but uh, certainly in May. And it will be a different experience since it won't be in the fall. But any season here is fantastic. This is one of the most beautiful areas in the country, uh, especially for a painter. It's just so compact. Everything's in one area. The only uh, element lacking are high mountains, like Mount Mansfield in Vermont. And that's close enough that when we need a fix, we go to the mountains of either New Hampshire or Vermont to paint. Uh, other than that, uh, I'll, I'll wait for all of us to, to speak with each other. Thank you, John. I should also say that John has served off and on and on again on the, uh, on an in an advisory capacity to Cape Ann Plein Air. And it really, it's great to have his expertise when we're coming up with, he does so many Plein Air events that when we're trying to pull together numbers of days and how many hours the quick draw should be and what sort of entertaining we should do for artists, he's really good at giving us uh, advice on that. So if you don't like the week in May, you can blame John. <laughs> Thanks for the coup de grace. <laughs> uh, it's really fun to work with John. I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's so local. Um, so as I said before we started, um, COVID sort of wreaked havoc with everything this year and it continues to wreak havoc and 
we, you know, we see a lot of industries that are suffering. Some of them are doing pretty well. Real estate around here is going crazy right now. I think people are moving out of cities. They're trying to look for a place with a little bit more space. And so real, real estate and construction seems to be going well. That's in the minority, really. The majority of industries are suffering all over the country and the world. And certainly it's affected the plein air um, episode of life, you know, the whole plein air event season, it was either abbreviated, some things were canceled, some things were changed. Everybody was really able to think quickly on their feet and start doing things virtually. So it, a lot of groups didn't, you know, really miss a step. But I've heard from a lot of artists how their lives had just totally changed specifically to your business over the last six months. And I just thought maybe you'd like to just share what your experiences have been through this, because it's, you know, it's a pretty major shift in, in life. So anybody want to start, just go right ahead and tell us your thoughts. Well, I guess um, for me, um, with the American Impressionist Society, um, our, the timing of our shows and our events was pretty amazing because our, our spring show started, it opened the first week of March. So it opened right before everything started shutting down. And our national show starts next month. And then we planned an online show in between, which is going on now. Um, so it didn't affect AIS nearly as much as some of the other organizations I know, but for me personally, um, you know, all of the plein air events were canceled um, and some went virtual to different extents. Um, as far as my gallery and my studio, um, we were doing portrait sessions on Monday nights, which um, had to go by the wayside because my studio, will, I can pack 10 people in there pretty easily, but it just, there was just no way we could do it, you know, during this amount of time. So we sure. really miss that. Um, but we do have a group of, of uh, artists here that have been going out and painting a couple times a week at, outdoors. And that's been a huge relief. And with all of, you know, for me, I travel a ton. I'm probably gone six months out of the year from home. And um, this year, <laughs> not so much. And so, you know, for me, um, it's, it's been an adjustment in that, um, you know, I've been able to focus more on, you know, painting closer to home. I did do a, a trip up to the Niobrara River here in Nebraska. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. There's waterfalls and people are just always surprised. It's like, oh, that's Nebraska. <laughs> but it's, it's gorgeous. And so we spent about five days up there and they had only had one case of COVID in the entire county when we went up there. Wow. And uh, that was right at the beginning of summer. And that was really nice. I got quite a few pieces done. Um, done some studio work. Um, uh, worked in my garden. You know, actually the crazy thing, my husband and I planted a vegetable garden for the first time since we've been married at 29 years. And so we've enjoyed that. And I've, I've, I've gotten some creativity in by, you know, going back to baking bread and, you know, cooking at home and all those kind of things too. But from an art standpoint, my gallery, um, I mean, we just had no traffic in our little downtown whatsoever. So I just, uh, I still just have the gallery open by appointment. I'm going to just open it up a couple of days a week um, on the weekends once the holidays get here. But um, it's, you know, income's been way down, obviously, but <laughs> expenses have been way down too. So overall, you know, it hasn't been the huge hit that I thought it would be. Um, but I think the biggest thing I just miss is, you know, just being with my tribe, you know, my painting buddies. And sure. um, I just can't wait to, you know, until we can all, you know, get out and you know, do workshops. I miss teaching too. I, I do, a, I do workshops and sure. really miss that too. One of the things I did do, my daughter is an elementary school principal. And um, when all of the schools went remote, I, I called her and I said, well, how about I do some little drawing lessons for the grandkids? I have four little grandkids that are, you know, grade school age. 
And she said, well, you know, why don't you think about doing them on Facebook Live or on Zoom or something? And it, somehow that, you know, you can, I can share it with my teachers and my parents and everything. And um, that ended up being probably the best thing I could have done because, you know, in the, in the process of trying to process everything that was going on and, you know, the grief of knowing that all these events were going to be canceled and, you know, I, I had to do something. And, and that was my way of kind of giving back. So I did a series of 25 drawing lessons for kids on Facebook Live um, over about a four month period. And um, it was amazing. It made me feel good. And I ended up, the big surprise was it wasn't just kids. I had um, people in their eighties that were doing these classes that I heard from. And as so many people just said it was something that they just really needed. And they never had time to do something like that until COVID hit. And so it just, it ended up being a really cool thing. So that's probably, that's probably the, the biggest thing that, um, that I did that helped me. And I feel like it, it did help other people too. So that's great. That really sounds great. You know, I, I love the story about you teaching the kids via Zoom. I just think that's such a great way to share your, your experience, mm -hmm. your talents with them. That's really wonderful. And also the baking. I've heard more people find, <laughs> you know, you couldn't find yeast for a couple of months, right? And everybody's planting right. gardens. And as I said earlier, everybody's adopting a pet. So uh, there are some pretty interesting, good little hobbies that have come out of a pretty dark time. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that. How about you, Garen? Have you been spending your days? You said that you're continuing teaching through oh, this? Oh, yeah. So it, that's been quite a transition. But uh, prior to COVID, I mean, I was usually, like Deborah said, um, traveling quite a bit, um, <clears throat> doing, you know, two or three public art projects, you know, here in the States as well as overseas a year. Um, but literally about, I don't know, six, eight, about maybe a little more than... Um, maybe eight or nine months ago, I kind of made a conscious decision not to pursue that, you know, doing that much public art anymore. Um, I had a great, you know, time doing it and projects still do come my way. And when, you know, things are sort of the planets align, I, I, you know, collaborate on a lot of these municipal public art projects, but I've made a really concerted effort um, maybe about a year ago um, to really focus my um, attention on, you know, uh, sort of buckling down and doing my own studio paintings. Um, you know, ideas and large compositions that I've wanted to do for a long time um, always took sort of the back seat, you know, in terms of, you know, the making a living stuff, you know, the public art, the teaching, the workshops and all of that other great stuff. I really never, you know, not as much as probably Deborah and obviously not nearly as much as John was sort of in the sort of plain air circuit that much. I mean, I did several events. Um, I was, uh, you know, in Easton a few times. I won a grand prize at Easton a few years back. I went to Laguna um, and then I did a couple in Vermont, but I was re never really in that sort of circuit. Um, I really enjoy them, this great com camaraderie and collaboration and great spirit uh, with all the artists. I mean, really, that's what the energy is really all about. I think the sales and the opulence of it and the parties are kind of an added thing. It's really <clears throat> something me and John and a group of New England artists kind of do regularly without a plein air event. You know, we get together and, you know, every year get up into Vermont and get up out, up into Maine and we, you know, just get together, cook lobsters and paint landscapes, you know. No anticipation, nobody brings any frames, you know, nobody brings any stickers, any wires or any hangers and nobody's framing anything in the back of their car to make sure it's you know, it, I, don't yeah. get me wrong. I love the plein air events. I really do. Um, but I really just love to get out there and paint. You know, that's really what I've been aspiring to do in between making a living as an artist, you know. So the teaching, you know, at the League, it's a very thriving, I don't know if you've ever been to the Art Students League in New York City, but it's a, it's a teeming, thriving environment. And, you know, it's originally built in 1885. It's got a great long tradition of New York you know, the, the hub of New York art. I mean, you name it, they all studied there. They all taught there. Jackson Pollock, Norman Rockwell, 
Robert Henri. I mean, it goes back, you know, to the great traditions of, you know, American painting. Who's ever who's who in American painting has studied there. So it's it, the the league is still a very vibrant, alive place. On any given day, there's you know hundreds of people going in and out of classes. The elevators are packed. You know, it's right in the middle of 57th Street in New York City. So yeah, when COVID hit, um, you know, a few weeks before it. There was uh, some some a uh, great deal of chaos in terms of what the plans were, <clears throat> and so a handful of instructors, me, and a handful of others, as well as with administrators, we were like, well, what the hell should we do? Because, um, well, how about we try to figure out how to use some online platforms and offer? And this was a very pilot kind of thing that we tried to do, and so I had a great opportunity to collaborate with some really young sort of cutting edge technologically brilliant young people that knew gaming platforms, that knew high resolution broadcast systems. And I was basically, so what do I need to basically become NBC out of my art studio? Because basically that's kind of what you need to do. It's just, you know, high resolution, good quality cameras, you know, fast internet. And um, so this, a couple of young, very, you know, very amazing tech, you know, savvy young people basically showed me the Art Students League helped me get some equipment in my studio. I bought some equipment and different kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, digital platforms, especially that the gaming industry uses. Um, you're able to basically broadcast or I'm able to my class. Um, I'm able to basically show my painting show the reference material or the model. Likely now we're not working from models, we're working from remote live models, which is a very interesting new thing. We have models posing remotely and they're basically broadcasting their image to our computer screens and it's high resolution. So it's obviously it's not like painting from life at all. Um, it's like painting from a movie, you know, a still, you know, a still sitting movie image. And then I can basically split my screen so my students can see me in real time doing a very high resolution demo. And so it's, it's, uh, we started that and we started putting it out there. And so usually my class, like drawing class or my painting class has 25 to 30 students on a monthly basis. And there's usually a waiting list, um, which is always great. Um, but now with Zoom and with the classes being promoted worldwide, it's not uncommon for the Art Students League to have Zoom classes of 50, 60 students from all wow. over the world. So it's, you know, the, the registration is once a month, the list of classes goes out, and within 48 hours, they're all booked up. So it's, it's really quite amazing how, uh, you know, there's such a, a thirst worldwide for the creative, um, uh, you know, the creative activity of expression and actually learning a particular craft, <clears throat> making something out of nothing with your vision and your skill, you know, to, uh, I'm just flabbergasted by the amount of people that are constantly asking, how do you do this? How do you do that? And show me this, and what's your palette look like? And this, and what kind of brushes do you use? I'm like, oh my God, okay, take it easy a little bit, you know? <laughs> and so, so that aspect of COVID has been, um, for me in education, you know, to learn how to use some of this technology. Sure, sure. And um, for a lot of other people to get sort of plugged into a really um, uh, worldwide and world known, uh, an amazing art institution that the Art Students League is. Now, Deborah, I have to completely agree with you. I can't tell you how much I thirst and miss, you know, painting from a live model with a group of artists standing and collaborating around each painting from life. Um, that's something that is really a, a tremendous void in, in my soul and in my heart that I, you know, I can't wait to get back to. I'm not looking forward to some of the ideas that artists are kicking around, you know, wrapping the model in cellophane and masks and all of the kinds of things that you're gonna eventually have to do to create that situation. Um, so that we can be relatively, you know, safe, you know, air ionizers and, you know, I mean, I hear about all of this stuff that they're planning in terms of opening back up the Art Students League and I'm like, 
okay, it all sounds pretty cool, but you know, what do you do about the exhale and me walking through that thing? You know what I mean? Has anyone figured out that yet? So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really desperate. You know, my wife has posed a few times for me, uh, you know, which is fabulous. I love painting Clara. Um, she's so beautiful, you know, so, but yeah, on a regular basis to paint from life or draw from the model, which I, before COVID would do three, four times a week on a regular basis. That's something that I truly, truly miss. Um, I do go out often, you know, in the Hudson Valley here because, you know, the Hudson River, I live in the Hudson Valley and, you know, it's no slouch for getting good subject matter in the landscape, you know, in the Hudson Valley. Not to say that, you know, Cape Ann is, is not an amazing place to paint, but the Hudson River is, is, is one of the golden spots as well. So I do go out into the, you know, farmland around here. I'm only 60 miles out of New York City. I go back into New York City and New York City is actually pretty quiet these days or it was pretty quiet for a couple of months there. Yeah. New York City was quite traumatized. Let me tell you, being a New Yorker, um, there was, uh, it was, it was very, very scary um, what took place there. And so there is a lingering um, trepidation among New Yorkers about uh, jumping back into life, right, you know, so quickly. Um, we lost a lot of people in New York, a lot of good people in New York were taken by this thing. So <clears throat> when you do go down to New York City, my daughter does live in New York City. People are very, very responsible and very, very cautious. They take care. They are kind and considerate, and they are worried about each other's health, and, 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 and they really look out for each other. It's something that a lot of people don't think New Yorkers, you know, take New Yorkers for, but New Yorkers are really good that way, actually. Um, so when I do go down to the city and paint and visit my daughter, um, it's a bit quieter in the streets, actually, <laughs> which for, a, for a, you know, an urban plain air painter like me, not such a bad thing. Sure. Uh, in terms of my studio, and John knows this, and Deborah knows this as well, as a self-employed artist, really not very much has changed. We're kind of, I've always hibernated in my studio. I always spent, you know, from, I'm like basically keep regular office hours for the past 45 years in my studio. You know, I'm in my studio at seven, eight o'clock in the morning. I'm here till dinner time. You know, sometimes I'm here late into the evening. Um, other than uh, less visitors coming by and wanting to see the work and, you know, be, you know, face-to-face uh, -face collectors, um, uh, because I do have a lot of online collectors. People do seek out, you know, purchasing works of mine online, which I've been moving and pushing and, and have having those kinds of things happen. My studio time and my studio work really hasn't changed that much. Um, and so I think that's true for a lot of um, professional, independent, you know, self-employed artists. I don't that's think- That's why we miss the, the plein air events. <laughs> yeah. Again, as Deborah was saying, it's a great excuse to get together because we need such a solitary existence. Yeah, yeah. We do. That we, we just the uh, Jones, uh, yeah. you know, that term for, for, for contact with our colleagues and friends. Yeah. Um, How's it been in Rockport, John? Why don't you tell us a little bit about life in Rockport? Well, it, it uh, was a quiet summer and uh, uh, fall is probably will be the same. Obviously, we couldn't even open our galleries until uh, around early June, I think it was. Uh, but it's been one long continuum, like a, we're, we're in limbo. Uh, and uh, it's great to get out painting. We can do that here, you know, some of us are alone because we're, uh, we are distance in that case. Uh, you know, the, the, the subject matter is, is widespread. It's not normally where there's pedestrian traffic unless you're painting a street scene. So that, that's all possible, um, but very quiet. And I mean, my, my schedule is, is generally, I'm, I'm here at the gallery, I'm in my studio in the back. Uh, in between, I do plenty of events, most of which have been canceled this year. So that's a disappointment. Um, 
for the social reasons as well as the economic reasons. Uh, you know, come January, uh, I and, and most often Susan, uh, Susan Lynn, but we go to uh, uh, Florida and South Carolina and, and uh, other places uh, to do some painting events and, and then just to paint. We show in various places, so we need to supply those galleries. And then around, um, well, sometimes it's April and, and sometimes earlier, uh, we come back here and, and begin our routines here. Um, the last time that I was uh, out painting on a trip was March. And Garen and I and, and two other uh, painters, terrific painters, uh, we uh, went to Vermont. And that's when it hit. Uh, in fact, we, we got there on the 15th of March. I remember. I and then remember. all of a sudden it started to, you yeah. know, almost like a, a, a buzz about who was getting sick and who wasn't, you know. And there were a very large group of uh, painters uh, there as well. Aside from ourselves, the four of us, we, uh, John Trainer and, and uh, John Hagen, or the other two, we rented a, a cottage and basically stayed uh, uh, to ourselves, cooked. We didn't really go out to dinner or anything. We just really wanted to uh, be careful and just paint every day. But there John, were, John, so, the, so the funny thing was, is that, you know, in March, it was hitting New York, you know, the, the buzz in New York was not a buzz, it was a siren, you know? And so I figured, oh, let me, let me go to Vermont, you know? <laughs> let me get out of New York. And, go to Vermont and paint for a week. You know, what am I gonna be missing here? You know, if anything, I'll be safer in Vermont, right? So I go to Vermont and we're there for a couple of days. And the first thing I hear is, oh, the guy in the cabin next to us just got COVID. And I'm like, I came all the way to Vermont. You know? <laughs> wow. And that was the last trip, uh, oh. right at that here. And everything was shut down. Sure. And then um, you know, there's been back and forth with the situation across the country, depending on people's behavior. Uh, but we're slated to go, Susan and I are slated to go to uh, Antoinette, Texas. Sorry, uh, uh, Susan, uh, OVLO. About, it's, a, it's another very good event. They are my mentors. Are you kidding? I love everything about it. So, uh, but that's mid-October. And we're a bit concerned about the uh, flight there. Not once we get there, because it's a... West Texas is very wide open, and they've adapted their event as well. Uh, but it will be such a great feeling to get back to see our buddies and, um, and just to get back to some type of regular routine. God willing, we won't be okay afterwards. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully next year things will begin to lighten up. John, do you think you'll go to Florida and do that routine again in the winter? Or are you, are you thinking you won't do that this time? Not until there's a vaccine. Um, I especially am a little older than, than I look. Uh, and I need to be careful. So, yeah. But uh, I, I just hope spring's eternal. I mean, I do think that every time people think, oh, the worst is happening and nothing like this has ever happened before. And I guess in our lifetimes, nothing like this has happened before. Um, and it can't get any worse. You know, the sky's always falling. We survive. We do survive as long as we take care and, and listen to reason. And we'll get through this. It's, and, you know, life will always have some changes to it. That's, we don't live like we did 50 years ago. Everything constantly changes. Uh, and people need to not panic, but they need to be very careful. And, We'll, we'll all meet again. We will. We definitely will. Absolutely. We may, if not before. That's right. So what is one thing each one of you is looking forward to with Cape Ann Plein Air? If there's one thing. There's one, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, there's Gary, one, go ahead. There's one spot John took me to. Because last time I was there, you know, John's like, oh, because John painted, you know, stayed at my place, painted in the Hudson Valley. I take him to you know, good a spot, as we call them, you know? <laughs> you do a good a spot, you know? And so there's one spot John took me to. It's actually near the Rockport Art Association. They have a parking lot and it, on the high ground, it overlooks um, the, um, the 
uh, Gloucester um, boatyard, as well as that long view of, I think, Gloucester in the distance, you know, with the church steeples and the buildings. So it's a, just an amazing view, you know, from so it's a little perched up a little higher. You know, at the North Shore Art Association parking lot, John, is yeah, that? Yeah. Well, it's to? not in the, it's not from the parking lot. It's a little, a little off to the side, but yep. it's yeah. just a great, it's a really great spot to paint. It sort of reminds you of all of those great working harbor scenes with the great town sunlit in the distance on a late afternoon. It's just one of those like classic. You know, I tell everyone, it, it, you could stand in one spot in Cape Ann. And you have a painting, and then you can uh, turn to <laughs> ten degrees, and there's another painting, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's how chock full this area is uh, with uh, painting material. You can, could never exhaust it in the different seasons and, and all that. Uh, Deborah, you're going to love it. Well, I see, Deborah, we see those gorgeous oceanscapes behind you. Yes. And I'm thinking any one of those could be someplace off of Gloucester or Rockport. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a feeling you're looking forward to painting some more ocean scenes I and seeing am. what the it looks like off the Cape Ann coast. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And this big one right behind me is one that I did. That, it, it's actually uh, Garapata State Park in California. And the, yeah, these other that, two are I actually was, bottom ones. I thought uh, that was West Coast. Yeah, it's West Coast. This yeah. bottom one's actually, uh, this one's a Ken Backus piece, and then this one's a Ray Roberts piece. Right oh. oh, okay. So I've got a whole, I don't know if you can see them all, but there's a whole uh, bunch uh, back there. Oh, there you go. Look at that. It's the West Coast because the ocean is the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. yeah yes, that's right. That's how we knew it was the West Coast. Yeah, the, that's right. the, there you go. <laughs> the sun sets on the other side. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Very different light for sure. Very How about different. You, John, what's what's gonna be a different a different uh vista for you? In in May. What what would you pick to what are you most looking forward to to paint in May? Yeah. Um I mean it's your backyard, but what is there you haven't done yet or that you'd like to get back to? In fact I just sold one of my backyard that I had done for Kappa. Uh oh, good. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, there's always the favorite spots, you know, the the, the paint factory and, and the Essex boat yard. And of course, the coast, if, if there's surf, uh, uh, you know, we'll all run to to the coast um, because the, the, the waves are just fabulous. Um, Frederick Law City, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. And what about that motif? Is it motif number one? <laughs> motif this number one. Up in I every have to do that. That this this conversation has come up in every single Zoom I'm sure. artist conversation that we've had so far. Uh, somebody said they're absolutely not going to paint it. I forget who it was. They said they've heard enough about it and they're not going to go there. I can't remember if it was Matt Barber Kennedy or somebody in one of the other Zooms said, "Nope, now I've heard too much about it. I'm not going to go near it." Uh, John, why don't you tell <laughs> us a little bit about it? I've painted it a, a, a few times, so I won't be painting it either. Believe me. Is that, the, is, that the one with the, is. is that the one with the red building? Yes, yeah, it's the red yeah. fish shack uh, right yeah. here in the inner harbor uh, yeah. in Rockport. And uh, it has a unique shape. Yeah. Certainly uh, compared to all the other buildings, well, that's why it's unique. Uh, and the different, it always appears differently because of the different tides, different seasons. The boats that are around it, some of the um, activities on the wharf, uh, the different weather conditions. Uh, it really is a great subject uh, be, uh, beyond what my uh, snarky remark. Um, but most everyone has painted it. It's almost like a rite of passage. When I first moved there, there was an old time artist, Dick Gibney. He was a World War II uh, artist, by the way. Um, he painted, you know, GI, GI scenes, you know, the war. And uh, he, he asked me one day, we shared studios in one building, and he asked me if I had painted the motif. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, oh, well, you got it well painted. I said, why? You know, everyone, I see this image everywhere. And he says, no. Nope. He says, right of passage, if you don't paint that building, Neptune will just <laughs> drag you right, in, right under, drag you right under, you got to paint it. Okay, okay. You know. Does I have to be the first one I paint? No, no. Deborah, Deborah, you, Deborah, you and I are going to go paint it together. Perfect. It's okay, a deal. Good. All right, you're on. 
That just, sounds perfect. Just to get it out of our system. All right. It's a deal. That I'm sounds perfect. <laughs> Well, you guys, this has just been great. I could, I could just listen to you talk forever. Um, it's so great to get to know you, Garen, and you, Deborah, and not so much you, John. You and I have <laughs> we see each other a little more often than than I see these guys. But it's one thing I have to throw is throw in here. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, at the end of the week, uh, hopefully, uh, again, back to normal. We will have a a very large lobster lunch. Uh, for all the artists in my backyard, which is on the ocean. And uh, it seems to be something that people look forward to. And I bring Absolutely. my, they, they, it's catch so much striper, fun. they catch stripers out of there, don't they, John? They, you can catch stripers off the rocks here. Yeah. Oh, really? Great. Yeah, I, wow. I saw it. I saw, one, I saw a guy catch a striper from yeah. John's back porch, back below his porch on the rocks one afternoon. You can have a striper. Everyone else will have lobsters. <laughs> I'll have some lobster too. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> last year, last year was Duri Wasim's very first lobster. She had it the Thursday night artist lobster dinner that we have at the Gloucester House, and then su Sunday, right? Was it Sunday, John? Saturday or Saturday? Um, at John's, I think she had two or three. She just loved it, and she had never had lobster before, so it was a joy to watch her. Wrestle with that the first time. Oh, can I have another one? <laughs> <laughs> so as hard as you work when you come, as hard as you work when you come to Cape Ann Plein Air, we offer as many fun things as you want to do on off hours. And some people do all of them, and some people you don't see them from the opening night until the gala. You know, you don't see them much in between. But we try to keep you fed and wined and dined and entertained and lots of storytelling and maybe a dinner at my house one inclement evening will be in order. Uh, last year, the, uh, we were gonna have to do a nocturne evening and we had a gale. It was a, it was a week long nor'easter. It lasted for a week. Oh. I've never seen one move through so slowly. Oh. So the weather was so. tough. It was tough. There were a lot of gray skies in the paintings uh, in October, but everybody loved it anyway. It was so much fun. So on the night of the uh, nocturne, we all just came here and ate a bunch of pasta and sang sea shanty. Oh, what a drunken sailor. <laughs> Thanks for the earworm, John. That's all I'm going to hear in my head all night long now. Yes. And, and many other sea shanties. And many other, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of very good singers. And the more they hung around here, the better they all got, or the better they all thought they were anyway, I think. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all so much. Hang out for a second once we stop the recording so we can just check in really quickly. And for the audience, we hope you had a great time listening to these three marvelous artists. I can't wait to, to have you meet them. Be sure to stay on our Facebook page starting on Sunday, this coming Sunday when the uh, gallery goes up. We'll have a beautiful gallery of three paintings per artist going up. They will be for sale. Please buy them and pay attention to our schedule every day. There'll be Zoom conversations, uh, studio tours, demos, and everything through the week and on into the fall. So thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you.